Previously on Drake Paragon. I think we might have to move Paragon, guys. Do you want me to say something? It's very difficult for me to advise you, yeah. but, but I would go take Iceland. Don't go in between there. Watch out for that. Yeah. I saw more shipping on the East Coast than it did on the West Coast. I don't like land, and I don't like ships. That's 11 days of probably decent sailing. So what do you think? firewood there. I'm turning the radar on, so don't put your head next to the dome. Since we're leaving a little late, we try to tighten up this route as much as possible. Hopefully this fog clears. It's also going to be some navigation around a lot of islands and rocks. And narrow spaces. I hope we have a nice sunny clear visibility day going through the first half of Prince Christian Sound to the Anchorage. It's supposed to be beautiful, eh? I hope so, yeah. It's Do supposed to be the most majestic fjord in all of Greenland. And if it's foggy it'll really suck. Because <laughs> we're only going to do this trip once. this year. See, visibility is kind of crappy. Can't even see the land on the port side. See these rocks on our starboard, and there's a little piece of floating ice right there. We've got a lot of those guys. You know, he looks small maybe on video, but if we motored right on up to him, we'd probably find that he's the size of a car. And hitting him would be very bad. So we are leaving the Nordic. We are here at the southern tip of Greenland. And I'm gonna zoom in, to show you what we're doing today. We're leaving here, we're going a little bit out, and then back into this big fjord called Prince Christian Sund, or Prince Christian Sound. Extremely dangerous weather conditions are often experienced in the waters south of Greenland out to 120 nautical miles. During a very brief time in summer, it is possible to avoid sailing through these waters by going through a deep, relatively narrow, and spectacular fjord called Ikerasaswak, otherwise known as Prince Christian Sound. 
Ikerasaswak is one of the world's most magnificent passages. Mountains rise between 3,000 and 5,500 feet on either side, and several glaciers along the fjord are always adding their icebergs and bergy bits to the pack ice, which blocks it for much of the year. We we'll hope to make it to here. There's an acreage right there where we plan to spend the night, and then it's a very short hop from there to the weather station the next day. And then the next day we push off from there for Iceland or for Ireland. We're still debating that one. We've got a radar contact here, and he's quite a large one. It is less than half a nautical mile directly in front of us. And That's this, which is less than a quarter nautical mile on our starboard. Barely see him there. Oh, I see it, I think. It's going on there. Yeah. Looks like a big, flat, floating piece of ice. I believe means rock, hazardous to navigation. So we're giving that a wide berth to our port side. So what the doctor say about yeah, your the finger? Said, I went there and I was just like, yeah, don't think I broke it. I just thought I might have maybe possibly had a very tiny little dislocation. I just went up to the hospital to ask whether I should rest it with a splint or whatever splint, or yeah. should I not do anything with it? And he was just like, does this hurt? No. Does this hurt? No. Does this hurt? No. And I'm like, it hurts when I do this. And he goes, it's a nice day. Go enjoy the sun, but don't do anything with your hands. <laughs> Did he charge you anything? Nothing. I Nothing. Sat down. Yeah. Wait for 20 minutes. The doctor just walked in and was just like, "Hello, you, the sailor." Hey. <laughs> he came down to the boat to say hi. Or and that's how I knew him because I knew he was the oh, doctor there. Oh, oh, oh. And I was like, "I'll go up and see you and the doctor." <laughs> Surfing in Clare, but not much. Same. You can go 
go down to Kerry, my cousins, they yeah. on the coast, so we might be able to pull in there. Dingo is nearby there, you can stop on Dingo where we met. And I would like to see Dingo again. Yeah, I think the crew and you would like Dingo. Good time to go, because the end of September, it's not crazy busy like August, but it's still nice enough weather. The one place that I think you guys would really like, which is only 40 miles away from Kinsale, yeah. it's a place called Baltimore, Baltimore, and that's where I trained to sail. That's where I learned to sail. Wow. This would be like me showing you Boston. Yeah, but it would yeah, be yeah. like you showing me where you learned to sail. Yeah. God, I keep flipping back and forth. Yeah, me too. Because I'm just thinking... Really? It's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's like shorter legs for Iceland. But I think... Uh, I don't know whether we can enjoy it. Because we're going north. We're there for a short time. Then heading in again. I think we'll run into the fair over there for a short time there too. Come a lot of offshore from Santa, short time again, and then, and then working our way down. Whereas we could just like puff it to Ireland and then have all this time exploring the west coast before we lose you. Yeah. Let's go see Prince Christian Sand. <laughs> what? Let's go see Prince Christian Sand first. Yeah, yeah. Hello? <laughs> Wow, I'm almost surprised that he didn't hail us on VHF. Maybe he thought that we were an iceberg on radar. I didn't see this, it was up here now. Yeah. It's we're about to enter the sound. It's just amazing. Prince Christian Sound. Here we are on what? See Frederick stuff? Where? The little town of Frederikstad is reportedly an anchorage somewhere over there. But we're not going there, we're going straight in to Prince Christian's Sund. Looks like we're going to have to go around that big iceberg. It's like blocking the entrance. Hmm. I mean, you could spend two or three weeks here just taking photographs and you still wouldn't get enough.
but all I see is like somebody's eye and their eyebrow and then a nose coming out and then it just disappears, it doesn't actually make a face. I might be able to take a picture then. <laughs> But, you gotta take a photo at that exact instant that you see it. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> I try not to go as crazy for photographs as I did when I was at the anchorage, because otherwise I'll be running this way. <laughs> Just unbelievable! <laughs> now I understand, I think, why people would want to climb a rock like this. I really don't have the words to try to convey how amazing this looks. I'm just in awe. Not the kind of thing you get to see every day. And Prince Christian Sound is only navigable for a very short time out of the year. The rest of the time it's iced in so that ships can't go through. Just a couple of months and here we are. God, I wonder what this place is like during the winter time. got an iceberg directly in the middle of the fjord so we'll have to go around him probably leave him to the starboard side he's big enough to be a real problem if we hit him see these mountains and go, whoa. There's a beautiful waterfall over here on the port side. Comes right down. This is one of the highest mountains here in the fjord. Isn't that amazing?
pretty sure I want to come back here. I know it. I was always thinking that this would be sort of like the first checkout Greenland voyage, not knowing what we would find. But now that we've got a good idea, I really want to come back. Man, it's like being heading up to the Misty Mountains. <laughs> no, I didn't happen to walk. That would be an absolute pain. I just can't get over the amount of colours in one place. Yeah. Like natural. Like, you've got reds, greens, blues, whites, like shadows, everything. Oh. And for 10 months out of the year, it's not navigable. Can't get in here. You can't get through here, yeah. It's all iced in. It's pretty cool to be motoring down a waterway that's only navigable for one-fifth of the year. Yeah, two, three months at most. So is that the kind of thing that people would climb? Yeah. That little crevice going straight up through the rock? Yeah. They said it's amazing in Prince Christensen for climbing. It's just so inaccessible that not a lot of people do. Yeah. Or even mountaineering, just to make it to the top, you'd have to really push yourself. I can't imagine climbing something like that. With this guy, that'd be hard, but if you walk the long way, there's a nice sloping bit open, right? Oh, yeah, you could walk all <laughs> the way. Then you could be like, you could just look down at it with all your climbing gear and be like, as if you climbed it. That'd be so cool. <laughs> So over here on the port side, we're passing by a glacier. Never thought I'd get to see one this close. So it's actually an anchorage at the base of the glacier here. We drop the anchor and go for a hike up by the glacier. So. We're just coming around the first bend of uh, Prince Christian Sound. Uh, it's uh, called Iglut Sakti Sak. So don't ask me what it means, but uh, it's pretty much got a, one of the smaller mountains of only a thousand meters and twenty uh, to our starboard side. So we're, we're motoring on through. We're going to turn this corner, and then we will be passing Og Og Pilagdok. Ogpilatok is the last town uh, before we get to the uh, weather station and it's the last town before we make our jump across to Iceland or Ireland. Uh, so we're still talking about it, we're still debating which one we'll do, but we're going to wait and see what happens with weather and uh, we're just going to enjoy this view as best we can because it's absolutely amazing. Next on Drake Paragon.